الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جزيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحنا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه واسكنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم اجمع بيننا وبينه كما آمنا به ولم نره ولا تفرق بيننا وبينه حتى تدخلنا مدخله ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters It seems that the ultimate goal for um, most of the people, if not all people, is to attain happiness. If you ask someone why you are, you know, why you are studying hard, because I want to get a good job, why you want to get a good, good job, because I want to make more money, why do you want to make more money, because I want to you know, buy a bigger house, why you want to get a bigger house, yes, to be happy. So when we ask this question, what is the purpose of doing what we are doing, most of us, would actually reach this conclusion that we want to be happy and pursuit of happiness is part of our constitution as a God-given right. We have the right to pursue happiness. But when you look at this particular subject from spiritual perspective, Imam al-Ghazali gave us a guidance of attaining happiness. For him, the real happiness is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we attain the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we cannot fully and um, um, uh, comprehensively understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but trying to seek more knowledge that would what lead us to real happiness because when we look at the physical uh, means that makes people happy it you know it creates some happiness perhaps very short sense of happiness but then it goes away and people will try to find another thing that gives me this feeling of happiness and then it's gone and then People are in constant um, attempt to um, be happy all the time. For Imam al-Ghazali, if you read his uh, overall philosophy, he actually provides this um, um, uh, prescription. When he said that the real happiness is when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your ultimate goal is seeking Allah's pleasure, get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what really makes you happy. This may explain why the happiest people that we know of are the prophets and the messengers, because they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone else. Yes, they, most, they suffered most, and they um, went through so many challenges, but even though they faced challenges, they always feel that they have the knowledge or their heart is always exposed to the uh, divine presence they are always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of ease in time of hardship in time when they are uh, followed by many people and the time when not followed by anybody so the more we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more happy we will be and this is what transforms man from um, baseness to purity some people get closer from the level of angels and some others, they go down to the level of animals, or even worse, as the Quran al Karim told us, These people are some people, the Quran con condemned, are worse than animals. They are worse than animals. So, what transformed us from what we share with so many animals to the angelic level is increasing our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will what will give us happiness in this world and inshallah will help us attain the ultimate happiness in Jannah inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Ghazali also made this wonderful point when he said that you cannot know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't know yourself. So in his um, alchemy of happiness he offered this explanation of who we are because if you don't know yourself you cannot know anything else. It's always good to start by knowing yourself, who you are, and the 
what are, what are your goals that you want to achieve in this dunya and in the akhirah? He said that know that every human consists of a body and a heart or spiritual heart in particular. And he said that the heart works to seek happiness through, through the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to keep in mind that our heart should always work to seek happiness through increasing our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gave an analogy of, of the body for us to understand ourselves and who we are and how things work, and the relationship between the body and the heart and happiness. When he said that, think of the body as a kingdom in which um, limbs and organs are the workers in this kingdom. And the appetite is a tax collector. Appetite is a tax collector. And anger is the police in this kingdom. And intellect is the chief minister and the heart is the king. It is the heart that makes decision that would influence or affect the entire kingdom. As Rasulullah sallallahu said, "Ala inna fil jasad mudghah. Ida salohat, saloh al jasad kullu. Wa ida fasadat, fasaj al jasad al jasad kullu. Ala wa hi al qalb." That indeed there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is healthy, the entire body will be healthy, and if it is corrupt, the entire body will be corrupt. And that is the heart, the most important part of of us. So in this kingdom, there are workers, tax collector, police, chief minister and the king. Of course, the king is the one who makes decision. And when he talked about the limbs and, and organs, this is very important because these are the ones that collect intelligence and give it to the, to, to, to the, the, the aql or the, the brain or the intelligence. And he said appetite and anger are very important as long as they are under control. Right? We need appetite to drive us you know, to work and to get married and to eat and drink and to nurture our body and so on. We need appetite. Right? This ayah in Surah Al Imran explains that it has been the love of, of, of uh, you know, uh, getting married and having properties. They have been decorated to mankind. By nature, they love to achieve these um, uh, desires. So appetite is important, and anger is also important. Anger is not always bad. It's bad when it goes out of control, but we need anger to protect ourselves. Sometimes you have to get angry. If someone wants to attack you, you have to get angry to be able to defend yourself. So both appetite and anger has been uh, in, in, in installed in us in order to nurture the body and to protect the body. And intellect is the chief minister, and the king is the heart. So now we have two scenarios. The first scenario is when the king, that's the heart, listens to the chief minister, that's intelligence, or intellect and keeps the anger and appetite under control. This is what makes a very good kingdom. When the heart listens to the intellect, not listening to the corrupt police or the corrupt appetite, tax collector. Things will be under control. The police will do exactly what it's supposed to do, and the appetite will do exactly what it's supposed to do, and the intellect giving good advice to the king, and the king make decision based on that. And the second scenario is when anger, or the police in this analogy, appetite, or the tax collector, they work together and imprison the intellect. And they force their will upon the weak heart. You can imagine what will happen in this kind of kingdom if a corrupt police and corrupt business people control the kingdom and they imprison intellect. And then the heart or the king becomes very weak and he has to follow them. This is exactly what happens to many people. 
when they always worship their appetite and their anger. They don't know how to control them. And intellect is there but not there. It's in prison. It's not functioning. And the heart gets always the urge of the anger and appetite. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to people that that some people are worshipping their own desires and whims. Have you seen the one who has taken his desire as his God? He worships it. And Imam Ghazali actually made a wonderful point when he said that some people, some among these people, who condemn the idol worshippers, but if they open their heart, they will find out that they are worshipping their own God that's in their heart, that is appetite and anger. No difference. No difference. And perhaps in this context, we understand the meaning of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا in Surah Al-Shams. Indeed, they will succeed those who purify themselves, and keep the anger and appetite under control, and the, the, they have lost those who um, let it go out of control. This is important for us to know ourselves and who we are and how things work. Imam al-Ghazali also went on to suggest that the, the senses are the collectors of information and give it to the intellect. So the intellect can use this information and pass it to the heart. Similarly with our senses, we are responsible to use our senses wisely. Our hearing, our seeing, all our intellect should all, always serve one cause that to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are focusing on al-akhirah, if you are focusing on how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to, we are responsible to use all these senses to serve this cause. No wonder then Al-Quran repeatedly reminds us, إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Indeed, the hearing and the seeing and the heart Everyone is responsible for these gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We collect information to help the intellect, and the intellect should advise the heart. And then we have one goal. If we have different goals, we just our goal is just to satisfy the appetite and satisfy the anger, then we will never attain real happiness because this takes us far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make it clearer, in a different uh, place of his, his uh, uh, writings, Imam al-Ghazali gave this example just to, to, to make it clearer in the mind of the people. And when he said that within every one of us are four qualities, four qualities, appetite and anger and satanic nature or and, 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 and uh, angelic nature. He said, within every one of us, within every one of us, is a dog, a pig, and a shaitan, and an angel. Just to simplify these this, uh, four attributes. We know pigs always like to get more and more, and they're never satisfied. That's the appetite. The dog, the wild dog, is like anger. And anger, or uh, predatory attributes, finds its happiness in rage and destruction and killing. And the pig, or what he called bestial attributes, finds its happiness in eating, sleeping, and copulating, and so on. And the demonic attributes always try to in, in provoke these two things, the pig and, and the dog. All, always want them to be super active. Always. That's his job. And the angelic attribute that contemplate, think, reflect, the wise part of who we are. So we are not purely devils or not purely angels. And we have this constant struggle between this evil and good within ourselves. <laughs> To be as good as angels or to be as bad as devils. 
So Imam al-Ghazali argued that the angelic part must master and control the other qualities. Because shaitan wants us to not to do good and to always push us to do evil, do bad. And if we cannot control the dog and the pig, then we'll be in big trouble. And this is unfortunately the case with most of the people. With most of the people. As the Quran says, they have hearts with which they cannot comprehend, cannot understand. They have eyes with which they cannot see. They have ears with which they cannot hear. But the true believers are trying to use every gift that, were, uh, that, that are given to know Allah more. That's why they use their eyesight to look and reflect. As the Quran says, Look at the wonders in this world and think about it. And when you listen, They use their you know, hearing very wisely. They are listening, but they can also differentiate between right and wrong. And they follow the best of the, what they hear. Right? They use their senses to serve the intellect, which is considered the lamp of the heart that gives light and guidance to the heart. And then what, this is what makes the heart sound heart, and the whole body will be good in this case. But if the heart is corrupt, then the whole body will be corrupt. So the nobility is, in, is what elevates humans and makes them different from animals. And through this knowledge, we can attain happiness not only in the akhirah but also in this dunya. As one of the tabi'een said, Wallahi, if the kings of this world know the kind of happiness we have, they will come and fight us to take it from us. So precious. But they don't know it. All what they see, people are praying, fasting. They look like in trouble. They look like depressed people, unsuccessful. But that's not true. The more we worship Allah, the more we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the happier we'll be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness and success in this life and the life after. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد brothers and sisters before we end I received a number of complaints that some uh, brothers and sisters, during the khutbah, they use their um, smartphones, and texting and emailing and talking to each other. Uh, I don't see this because all those who, people I see are very committed, mashallah, and, and um, very disciplined. But perhaps it happens in the back. Um, I didn't know about this, but I received a number of complaints that some um, are not listening to the khutbah. They talk to each other or they use their text messages. Uh, and, 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 and emails and so on and perhaps watch the news uh, even if the khutbah is boring you should listen, be patient you'll be rewarded for your patience inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala but during the khutbah you should do nothing but listening and if you get something out of this khutbah that would be great if not, just be patient alright sometimes the khutbah uh, provides something new you don't know before or sometimes it reminds you of something you already know so you can benefit from the khutbah one way or the other. But uh, talking during the khutbah, according to the hadith, your jum'ah is null and void, right? So uh, I hope uh, this message is clear that even if you come late, even if you are in the lobby, listening to the khutbah is important and we cannot do anything else other than this unless there is emergency. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all and to uh, um, guide us in these uh, coming blessed month, uh, days of the Hijjah, inshallah, to do as much, um, uh, as, much uh, as possible of the righteous good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, allow us to worship Him and serve Him, to know Him and to um, get closer to Him. Allahumma inna nas'alika al-huda wa al-afafa wa al-ghina.
اللهم إنا نسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث وأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء ونسألك الغنى عن الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا ضعفاء فقونا أزلة فأعزنا مهزومون فانصرنا مرضى فاشفنا اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم كما جمعتنا في الدنيا على طاعتك فاجمعنا يوم القيامة في مستقر رحمتك وتحت ظل عرشك إخوانا على سر المتقابلين اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا مرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا موت المسلمين وانصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم من أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بخير فوفقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بشر فرد كيده إلى نحره يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك أن ترحم أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم ارحم أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم ارحم أمواتنا وأموات المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين